Hello and welcome to Mr. Melvin Makes. Today I am going to be making art inspired by the artist William Wegman. William Wegman is a photographer who enjoyed taking creative pictures of his Weimarimer dogs. The dogs in his art are often anthropomorphic, meaning they act a lot like humans. You can see that here in this photograph by William Wegman in which these two dogs are dressed up in human clothes. To me they look a lot like they're part of a fashion shoot. I'm going to challenge you today to creatively and skillfully make artwork that shows animals behaving like human beings. And I'm going to do that in my video today by actually making a drawing of two Weimarimer dogs behaving like humans. If you're following along with me, what you're going to need is pencils, eraser, uh, sharpies for outlines, and then any other drawing supplies that you'd like. Um, Remember, you're the artist, so you can really choose anything you want to make a work of art. This is what I'm using today. Pencil, eraser, sharpie, and crayon. To get started, your first choice is to decide whether or not you want your picture in portrait mode, up and down, or landscape, side to side. So it's entirely your choice on how you orient or position your paper. I want kind of a tall sky, so I'm going to leave mine portrait. Getting started, um, follow along with the steps on the side if you want to make a Weimaramer dog. The nose and snout is kind of a little square with a rounded W underneath. That's the nose and snout. Next you'll put just a U under that for the bottom chin. And then you'll draw the top of the head of this dog, this Weimaramer, by just kind of drawing a bell shape or a rainbow shaped line up from those, um, those cheeks and around. Weimarimers have really big ears, nice big floppy ears, almost as long as their head, so on either side or both sides of the head draw two kind of rounded triangles for ears. Step number five, if you're looking at the sheet with me, is a couple of bizarre looking lines. Those are just going to add details that show the shape or form of the dog's face. Lines up top that show kind of where like a dog's eyebrows would be. And then the lines around the snout that show that the dog's face comes out into the space, um, into a space like a snout would. Our noses aren't quite like that, so we don't really have lines like that on our face, but Weimer I'm sure do. For creativity's sake, I'm adding an extra step in my first dog. I'm having a tongue sticking out just to kind of make it a little bit more silly, a little bit more kid-friendly. I know a lot of my students like to have... Um, the dog's tongue sticking out when they draw dogs. So in this section here I'm just going to do um, a little bit of drawing to show my Weimarimer. With my drawing complete, I just want to talk a little bit about how you can make this drawing a little bit more anthropomorphic, meaning uh, like a human being. And the way I am achieving that in my drawing is by giving these dogs human appendages or human uh, arms and hands. And so in this section here, I'm just kind of quickly, or rather a little bit slower, going over how to draw hands. Um, Hands can be tricky for a lot of artists. Uh, when I was younger, I spent a lot of time studying my own hand um, in drawing to kind of master that skill. So uh, what's really important to remember is that the hand is kind of made up of a couple parts. Um, the thumb, the four fingers, and then the palm. Uh, I can, you know, after some practice, draw hands pretty quickly in many different um, positions. Uh, but it's something you might want to practice if you are also adding human appendages to your drawing. Um, so next I'm going to go ahead and add in some Sharpie to show an outline. Remember whenever you use Sharpie at home or in a classroom it's a good idea to have a second piece of paper under your drawing paper just so you don't make a mess on the table surface underneath. As you're watching I want you to notice how I'm using the Sharpie to add some textures into my drawings. Um, adding little beads of water on each of the dogs shows that they are um, kind of wet from being in this hot tub for so long and then I'm adding those little craggly lines to the mountains to show that they are um, a little jagged and craggly. 
<laughs> well, I gotta say, I'm pretty proud of myself there. I've got my two dogs, William Wegman style, with their arms sticking out of this hot tub, really kind of showing us how great it is in here, almost inviting us into this picture. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and add some color now and finish this. But before I do, I just want to remind you that as a creative person, you've got so many choices to make, uh, one of which is how you finish a picture. You can leave it black and white by using um, pencils or marker or um, pen to add areas of value. You can add color in a number of different ways, but use what's available for you. Maybe step outside of your comfort zone a little bit. I'm going to use crayons today. You probably saw I was gathering those. I was really thinking about a color scheme today, and that's what I want to take some time to talk to you all about is a color scheme. You're a creative person. You can come up with your own color schemes. You can make new ones, maybe. Um, but I've been really into this blue orange kind of complementary color scheme. If you look at these, they're across from each other on the color wheel. So they're opposite colors in that terms. They have high contrast with each other. I'm doing a little bit of a, spit, a split complementary with blue. So I've kind of got my blue family here. And I'll use the color wheel to help you understand. Uh, the reason I want to do this is so you can understand why I'm using my colors so that you can maybe think a little bit about the colors you pick. Uh, from there, I've got my oranges, but I kind of am doing, again, a split complementary if you followed along with my coloring contest video you would have seen a very similar splint complementary. So I've got my orange but I've also got yellow orange and red orange with a little bit of yellow because I'm going to use that in some spaces for really a bright pop of color. Yellow being the brightest color on the color wheel. So from here you can see rather than a direct complementary just blue and orange which can kind of get basic and um, a little simple for my taste. I'm doing a split complementary with a whole range of orange and actually even a whole range of blue. I'm going to mostly use those blues in the hot tub, a little bit in the sky. My neutrals here are for my sky and also my Weimarimer dogs. And then my oranges will become accents and details, adding pops of color um, and, and things like that. So um, if you follow along with my, let's see, what was that? The lemur video uh, where I drew lemurs in a forest, I used a scratch sheet of paper and um, embossed the paper, meaning with a scratch sheet of paper or a scrap piece of paper, whatever you choose to call it, and a really sharp pencil um, or hard leaded pencil, I kind of draw these patterns across the paper and then it um, presses an indentation into the paper that you're coloring on to create a cool effect. So I'm actually going to do that here um, I'm going to color my picture and then I'll be right back with you to talk about um, kind of some closing thoughts on this work of art. Bet if it weren't for the music, you would have thought your computer froze just about now. I'm actually just taking a moment to slow way down and talk about what I just showed um, in that time-lapse session with the ruler. I use the ruler, um, and I actually use the ruler often to cut perfectly straight lines, as I'm doing right now excruciatingly slow in the slow motion uh, section. So what I'm doing is I am using my supporting hand, my um, in this instance it's my left hand, to hold down that ruler perfectly still where I want to cut the paper across straight. 
Now, if you had adult supervision, you could perhaps just use an X-Acto knife to cut along that edge. Um, but if you're strapped for resources or um, just can't make that happen for whatever reason, holding down a lot of pressure on that ruler with your supporting hand and then tearing directly straight up on the paper will actually use the ruler as kind of a sharp edge to tear the paper rather than to cut it. This isn't perfect and it takes a lot of practice, so don't go along like I am um, trying to tear your uh, finished artwork. Um, I feel like I've got the skill set to make that happen, and you know what, maybe you do too, I believe in you, um, but definitely practice first. I, uh, I wouldn't do this if I didn't feel comfortable with it. And let's talk about the reason why I actually chose to cut my artwork smaller. Um, I remembered for a second, and artists always go through moments like this where they reflect and change their ideas, I remembered that Mr. Wegman, William Wegman, is a photographer. And I thought, well, wouldn't it be really cool if I cut my paper into sort of more of a square so that it would look like an old kind of Polaroid photo? And so that's what I'm doing here, is I'm actually taking the drawing that I made and I'm cutting it into just a smaller sort of square shape and gluing it onto a larger piece of paper so that it almost looks like a Polaroid. Um, I was even able to cut out the moon from my first part um, that turned into a little, bit, a little bit of scrap paper and attach that to my new drawing. Uh, and then it allows me to add a fun quote like this is a Polaroid photo that somebody might be collecting from a long time ago. And with all that being said, I'm done with my artwork. I completed my challenge. Now I'm just waiting for you to do the same. I challenge you to make a work of art that shows animals behaving like human beings. And I challenge you to have fun while you do it. Enjoy and thank you so much.